Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently did a video, probably about a month ago at this point, as to what I'm going to be doing next year, or I was asking for input specifically as to whether I should fish tournaments, should I give up tournaments, should I take some time off to pursue YouTube and other potential business opportunities, should I keep fishing if I fish, what circuits should I fish, because as we know, the uh, pro circuit, the Major League Fishing Pro Circuit, which I fished last season, has been changed, uh, not for the better. It's had decreased payouts. It's got some just different changes that are not necessarily angler friendly. Uh, they still offer the only opportunity to move up to the BPT Tour. So if you want to do that, that's your option. Otherwise, I could fish the Bass Opens which has also changed their criteria to make the elites a little bit in that in order to do that, you have to fish all nine tournaments, all three divisions, and then it's a cumulative point standpoint to make it into the elites. Uh, there's the potential of maybe trying to get into the NPFL. And then, you know, the other option was I could potentially take some time off of fishing and try to gr continue to grow my YouTube channel and some of the other business endeavors. Cause you know, at this point, if you guys follow the channel regu regularly, you know not only am I producing daily content for my personal YouTube channel, I'm also engaged now with Fish the Moment, where we've uh, not only, you know, I've been working with Fish the Moment producing uh, content for them, not from a video standpoint, but from like lake map breakdowns and one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions, different ways to provide teaching material to other anglers, We've also started an additional YouTube channel called Bass Fishing Declassified, which is myself and Johnny Schultz from Fish the Moment. It's Randy Blockett, it's Miles Berghoff, it's Kyle Cordiana, it's Jimmy Easterling. It's a bunch of guys, uh, and we're probably going to expand that even to more anglers, but we're producing uh, videos, several videos a week for that channel, which is going very well. So we're uh, having a good time growing that as well. I'm in the in the, the the process of trying to create a couple of baits to come to market with those. So I've got a lot of different things that are going on. Now, having said that, I got into the sport of fishing or the fishing world because of how much I love to fish tournaments. So I don't feel like I'm in a position where I can give up my tournament solely because I think the tournaments do a lot of things for me. They, they fill my competitive uh, hunger they also provide me with some content for the YouTube channel. They allow me to market from uh, my sponsor's products. They allow me to uh, kind of just allow, in my opinion, give me credibility to provide you guys at home with tips. Because, you know, I think as a professional angler, that gives me credibility. And that also provides me with a lot of information that I learn from other anglers to share with you guys, whether those anglers like it or not. The truth is a lot of the tips I get are from other professional anglers. So having said that, I think it is important to keep fishing tournaments. The question is, what tournament should I fish then? And, you know, I think as I've stated before several times, the NPFL is just not the right option for me. I think it's a good option for other anglers out there. I think it's, it's, there are positives about that circuit. I just don't feel like it's necessarily the absolute top of the game, which in my opinion is either the elites or the Bass Pro Tour. I think the NPFL would be more of a lateral move from where I'm at now. But again, I think they offer a platform that does have some good advantages. Uh, you know, they've got a championship that uh, 25 guys make. I think it's a $100,000 first place payout, which is great. They are spread out across the year, which allows guys that have a lot of other things going on uh, a really good advantage and it allows them to be able to fish professional level events. For me, it's not an option. That leaves me then with what I'm fishing now or what I'm qualified to fish, which is the Major League Fishing Invitationals, which is the old pro circuit. If you were in the top 75, you got, a, you got an invite into that. And they are capping that field at seven at 150 boats. They're not going to go over that. So there is realistic possibility that this year, for the first time in a while, there are going to be a lot of guys that get turned away. Now, it all depends on how many guys accept the invites, how many guys decide not to fish. But because they're allowing people to fish just one event, that will probably keep the fields full. Now, I do have some concerns 
when you reach the end of the season, because we're no longer fishing for a championship, is that going to make it really difficult to fill the field? So could we have a field of 100 boats, which means the payout is going to be terrible because you're just not going to have enough cherry pickers that want to fish that event, mixed in with the fact that there are 30 or 40 guys that have dropped out of the season because they're no longer interested in fishing because they can't make the top eight in points to qualify for BPT. It's still the best paying format out of the ones I've mentioned, in my opinion. And having said that, it's it's almost identical from a risk reward standpoint. So just because the payouts are slightly better, it really is a very, very minuscule amount. But it is also a high dollar event with $5,000 entry fees. And if you do well, you can, you, you can still make a little bit of money. You're not going to crush it unless you win an event, but you can generate some money doing that. The last option then is the Bassmaster Opens, which <clears throat> uh, in the past, you've only had needed to fish one division of three tournaments to have a shot at qualifying for the elites. They've changed that now where, in my opinion, the only way you should be fishing a tournament in the Bass Opens is if you want to make the elites, you should fish all nine. Or if one of those divisions happens to be on a lake that you do extremely well on and you think you can win an event, then you need to fish all three tournaments in that division to make it to the Bassmasters Classic if you do happen to win the event. But from my standpoint, like if if you're not if you're not feeling like you can go out and hammer them on one lake, there's no reason to fish one division. I think you're better just to go fish all nine at that point, but that's difficult to do for a lot of people, including myself. That's uh, one of my biggest concerns with the Opens is the nine events. It's nine events that have very little reward, and the, realistically, you're going to lose money fishing them. Now, realistically, the majority of people are going to lose money fishing any of these options that I've mentioned. The thing with the Bass Opens are the payouts are, are so poor and because they're a low dollar event to begin with, with entry fees of, uh, I think eighteen hundred dollars. I could be off sixteen hundred dollars. Whatever they are, uh, it's 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 just tough to generate enough prize money. Because if you finish fortieth in that event, you might win three thousand dollars, and that's fortieth out of two hundred and fifty boats. I think they're allowing in, or two hundred twenty five boats. <clears throat> and at that point with expenses being as high as they are, <clears throat> you're really looking at a very difficult time to make money even when you cash a check in those events. Versus, you know, if you if you cash in a $8,000 check with the uh, invitationals or a $10,000 check, you're going to make a little bit of money, even with high expenses for somebody like myself, because I'm traveling from Wisconsin so my gas mileage or gas fuel usage is going to be probably double to triple what most other anglers have. And right now, $5 a gallon, that really does add up. So having said all of that, I don't, I don't feel like there is a clear-cut winner. I think it truly comes down to each individual angler, what they want to fish in terms of do they want to make the elites, do they want to make BPT, are they happy just fishing high dollar tournaments? Are they not necessarily looking to make a full-time career out of this? You know, I've talked to a lot of other guys that have very good jobs outside of fishing and that's their primary income. So they just want to fish events and they're not necessarily looking to make it to the BPT or the elites. Um, so it really comes down to the angler. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think the most of the uh, the direction that you're going to go is not a good a good direction, meaning I don't feel like any of the three organizations are offering something that, that's a good event or a good circuit for the anglers to fish. I think, like I said, the reality is probably three quarters of the people that fish these events will lose money. And in my opinion, that's not a good decision to make. But having said that, if you're in the industry or want to make a career out of it, you have to choose one of these options. If you want to make a career in the tournament world, uh, which at this point I feel like is, is becoming harder to do and not as important. I think there's a lot of other avenues in the fishing industry uh, to make a very, very good living. But, you know, for myself, if I want to keep fishing tournaments, 
when I look at everything and lay everything out, I think the best option for me still is to stick with the, the MLF Invitational. So that's what I'm going to be doing next year. I could potentially mix in the Toyota Series, which honestly I haven't even mentioned. It's the, it's the level below the MLF Invitationals. That's the best option out there. Like if anyone's looking to fish tournaments and to, to test the waters of a higher professional level type caliber event, the Toyotas are without a doubt the best option to go. I just don't feel like being that I'm already the level higher that I should necessarily drop down, but that doesn't mean I won't add a circuit in to fish as well. I really like the schedule of several of the different divisions with that. They've got a $200,000 championship. Like they've got they've got the best circuit out there for anglers looking to fish higher higher dollar tournaments. Uh but for me, I look at this as, you know, my my best opportunity still to get to the next level is probably to stick with the invitationals right now. And a lot of this goes down to the schedules. I've never done this before in my career where I've looked at a schedule and said, you know, I'm going to base my decision off of what the schedule is. And in this case, you know, it's not solely the decision, but it's a six event schedule. It's going to be a power fishing event, a uh, season long schedule. And I've got one in La Crosse on the Mississippi River, which is a place that I really love to fish. It's not my home water by any means, but I've, I've, I've done very well there. Uh, and I, I just love fishing it. That's how I feel about Okeechobee, which is where the season starts. It's a place I love to go and fish. I've got a very good track record there and it fits my styles. There's a couple other lakes in the schedule I haven't been to, but based on the time of year, I think it should be right up my alley. And then there's a couple other lakes that I've been to, and I'm excited to go have another opportunity at, because I know that they set up, you know, like the Potomac River. It's a grass fishery. I've, I've, I've done well, and I've done poorly, but I feel like I know what I need to be doing. So from a schedule standpoint, I think it gives me a good opportunity of moving up to the BPT. The Opens... It's nine events. The schedule does not excite me at all. Like I want to go to lakes that I want to fish. And that doesn't mean they have to be good lakes. That just means that I, they're lakes that I enjoy fishing. And the open schedule, I was very disappointed with. I thought there was going to be some northern events and there really aren't any northern events. So it's something that it just doesn't set well with me as well as the timing of some of those events have some conflictions with family events. And from that standpoint, I don't want to be put into a tough position of fishing a tournament that I, that overlaps with a family event. So I can avoid that. Plus, you know, I do feel like I've got a good relationship with MLF from a uh, exposure standpoint. They've been very good to me in the past. They've, they've used me for lots of articles. They've used me for, video content they've used me for magazine content and you know that does have value as well and from my sponsor standpoint my sponsors haven't expressed that anything will change if i go if i if i go with or with or move from one division to another you know it seems like that's kind of i've got the support of my sponsors so that was something that uh, also came into play on this but for next year, I'm going to be sticking with the invitationals. We'll see what happens. You know, I've I've been skeptical of it. I think the direction of it is not a good movement. But at this point, it still offers me a better opportunity. When there's eight spots being offered up to the uh, basically both the elites and the, the BPT, depending on what division you fish, there's only 150 guys fishing the one division and there's going to be 250 guys fishing the other division. So it, it does have an impact. I mean, from a percentage standpoint, if you play the numbers, it should technically be easier to make the BPT. And the reality of it is I like the BPT. I've fished at the BPT level. I've had success when, you know, I qualified to fish the one event and I thought it was great. I thought they treated the anglers well. And I, I enjoyed my time very much. I would love to get to that level. And that's not saying anything about the elites. I've never been to the elites. I've got a lot of friends that fish the elites and they love it. So I, I would love to have that opportunity as well. And maybe one day I will. Uh, so we'll see what happens this year. At this point, it's going to be a year by year type thing. And we'll, we'll take it from there. But I've had a lot of you ask me as to what I've decided to fish. 
and I felt I owed it to you guys since I put the video out there about a month ago stating that I didn't know what I was going to do. And that's where I'm at right now. Uh, we do need to sign up here. I think it's the first week of November. So we've got a little bit of time, but I really don't see anything changing unless something you know drastic comes out from either of the organizations. So I hope that you will continue to support me. I hope that you will follow along on my journey because I'll continue to make content regardless of where I'm fishing. Uh, for the next, you know, who knows how many years, and we'll see what happens. But I'm excited to to be done with that. It's always a stressful situation. I'm, you know, I'm I feel comfortable with the decision I've made. My family supports it, uh, and you know that's the direction we're going to go. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all of you. Stay tuned. We'll have more videos coming out tomorrow.